So how do you know if they're real or fake? Today we're going to show you a simple, easy thing you can do at home to check if it's wood, stone, resin, or whatever the composition is. Hey, it's done. Today we're going to look at some items and we're going to show you a simple, easy way to tell if it's fake. Now, I run into statues all of the time. And many times you'll run into some that you're almost positive are stone, hand carved, and they may even have a label that says handcrafted, hand carved on the bottom of them. Now, those kind of labels do not mean that it's actually made out of stone. They will cast resin figures and then carve the rest into it. So it's very confusing if you don't know that. There are also some woods you will run into or something you may assume is wood that uh, turns out to be resin. Ivory is another thing. A large chunk of what people assume may be ivory is honestly only resin. You can't sell ivory, so you shouldn't really mess with ivory to begin with. But if you want to know if it's real or not, this test will work for pretty much any of those types of materials. Now, before you even want to test it, tested, the biggest thing to check out is the weight on something. Now, I have these two statues here. One of them is stone and one of them is not. Now, they both are hand carved out figures, though. So that's the part that a lot of people may not realize. Now, the biggest factor is that the stone one, the hand carved soapstone statue here is heavy, extremely, extremely heavy for its size. It weighs almost twice what this resin statue here does. Now, you may not have something to compare it to to assume a weight like ratio like that. If it's really heavy and it's small, chances are it's probably stone or metal or something along that line. But again, if you're not sure, the best way to do that, let me get out my handy dandy pin cushion here. I'm going to take out a pin, just a standard pin, a needle, whatever the case may be. I'm going to take a lighter. And you'll heat the pin up until it's red, red, red hot. So be very careful. It's dangerous. You don't want to set it down. You can really burn yourself. And then from there, what you'll do is you will stick the needle red hot into an inconspicuous place, something that won't be very noticeable when you do it. Now, this has carving marks down here in the back. So that's where you would test something like this. You wouldn't see it. It's a teeny tiny poke to it. Same thing with the stone item here. Obviously, you may not know it's stone, so you will have to test it. Now, I've heard people talk about if the item's cold and all these kind of things like that. Stone is usually cold, but not necessarily. If you're in a hot environment or you're at a thrift store and you're, you may be hot, it's very hard to tell if it's made out of resin or anything else like that just by feeling the item, just like the wood. Now, sometimes people will say you tap it or something like that. It honestly makes the same noise as a resin piece. It's old wood. This is actually wood and sterling is, is what it is. Now, I would be able to test this one as well. Now, if I wanted to test this one to see what it was, I would probably remove the base. Most items, you'll have a tiny little area where it's safe to stick a hot needle into it to be able to test it. The hot needle will work on so many things. If you find an inconspicuous spot on the item you're looking for, you would just stick it in and see what happens. Now, what's going to happen to a stone piece if you've got a hot needle? Nothing. It won't go in. It won't penetrate. It may leave a tiny little black dot from some of the carbon on the top of the needle, but that's about it. Other than that, it's not going to go into the item whatsoever. Now, resin. It will instantly sink right into the resin. It may not smoke or anything else like that right away, but you'll instantly know without a doubt, it will melt the resin. That is the key factor to it. With the wood, if it's wood or resin, the resin will melt. It'll sink right in. The wood will not. You might see some smoke coming out and smell burnt wood. Again, it's a small, tiny little needle or pin you're using. It's not going to leave much of a mark. You do it in a very inconspicuous spot. Now, like ivory, one of the biggest things that we run into, I don't buy them, but one of the biggest things I run into, which you used to be able to buy, would be cue balls. 
They're ivory, a large chunk of them, and people used to buy them and turn around and sell them to artists, and they would carve them and all sorts of different things like that. Now, you don't touch it, you don't mess with ivory. It is illegal, the Endangered Species Act and the whole work, so don't mess with ivory in general. But if you have a piece in your possession, it doesn't mean to get rid of it. But if you want to know if it's real, take the hot needle to it. Again, a real small, inconspicuous spot on that. Now, a cue ball is a great example because they used to be able to be found all over the place. Those markets have dried up. You don't see them very often, but that's the way to tell if it's a resin cue ball versus a bone or even a ivory. Bone, it will not melt either. It will smoke and maybe burn a small section of it, but that's about it. So that's a good way to tell. If you've got necklaces and you're not sure if it's, say, bone versus wood, sometimes it's very difficult to tell when it's a car piece and it's on a necklace. If the needle sticks into anywhere in those pieces, it's going to be a resin and not bone. Great way to tell the difference. So if you're unsure of how to figure out what the composition is, that's the best way. Now there's a ton of different items you can try this with, a ton of them. Even some of the plastics, some of the earlier plastics may smoke, shrink, or shrivel versus some of the newer plastics, which will literally melt from something like that. In some cases, you can distinguish the type of material things are, again, with a hot needle. Now, don't just go jabbing everything with a hot needle. The figures and statuary is probably the best things to use that testing for, again, in a small, inconspicuous place like I've been saying all along. Now, there's a ton of fakes out there with statues like these right here. Probably 99% of all the statues you run into are not going to be stone. They're going to be some form of resin or plastic most all of the time. The stone ones, like the one out of 100 that you run into, is going to be carved stone. Now, the price-wise is huge. It's drastically different. Just because, though, this is resin doesn't mean that it's not going to carry a value. The craftsmen who did this are a known maker. doesn't really matter the maker on this specifically, but if you look up the items, you may be surprised that even the resin figures can sell for some decent money. If it's real and it's stone, that doesn't mean it's going to sell for more than the resin figure, but it will surely help you identify it and price the item correctly. You don't want to sell something that's you're marking as hand-carved stone and then send it out to somebody only to find out that it's resin and you never checked it out. Now, obviously, if you're at a thrift store or someplace like that, you could probably do the test in the store. I don't know if you'd want to mess with that, but it would be an easy test you could do. You could keep a little box in your pocket with a needle or two and keep a lighter, and you could test all of these things. I do keep something in my vehicle just in case. Just like with my jeweler's loop that I always carry, a magnet that I always carry, a tape measure that I always carry, as well as a few other tools uh, while I'm out there, tweezers and things like that. I usually keep a little box in the car of a bunch of stuff like that. A needle and a lighter would be an excellent addition to your sourcing and reselling tools. I don't know how many times I've run into stuff that I wasn't 100% sure, and the needle trick worked every time to distinguish what is what. Now, many times, too, the smell of the hot needle touching the item can help you identify the type of material that it is as well. But as I said, if it's fake, it's resin or plastic, the needle is going to sink into it going to sink into it very, very quickly, almost instantaneously. If it's stone, it won't. If it's wood, it's not going to, other than smoking and smoldering from that hot, red hot needle going into it. If you're going to test a couple items, you should probably heat up the needle in between each one just to make sure. Usually it's safe to stick a needle on the bottom of a, a statuary or something like that. It's a tiny little pinhole. This one, it wouldn't have affected it. This one, you probably wouldn't have seen it, especially in some of these cracks and crevices over here. Same thing with the wood. I could have taken off this base. It just has a couple of pins holding it in. And that way, my test mark you wouldn't see on the item itself at all. Statuaries of any kind you can use this for. Now with resin, the quality and the techniques used to make these statuaries have gotten very advanced. The painting can fool anybody. So the color scheme, the tone of the outside of the item can fool a lot of people. Now in this case, this is an older piece. Now with this piece, as well as tons you will run into, they may be 60 plus years old. 
this piece was probably made in the 60s or so maybe even into the 50s but it still is resin so it has a tone to it it looks vintage it has dirt and dust and all the crevices so again you've got to look at it very carefully this is probably much older than that it doesn't have a lot of dirt or anything in it but it's stone so there's nowhere for it to stick to so you, you've got to use your common sense as well as tricks of the trade like that. A magnet, if you're not sure on something, if it's made out of iron versus bronze or anything else like that, a magnet is one of those tools you use as well. If it's marked sterling, but a magnet sticks to the entire thing, it's probably not sterling. So anyway, that's just a touch on one of the easiest things you can do out there right now to test what the item is made out of used it for many many years it hasn't done us wrong ever but anyway that's what i have for you today hopefully that gave you some ideas some thoughts if you enjoyed this video please hit that like button down below you can also hit the bell icon to be notified if i post new content or go live subscribe and tell all your friends Oscar Meyer, the first name in Bologna. How's that?